G'day viewers. The difference in water level between these two chambers tells me that these pads are as bad as full of crap as a politician trying to get elected. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to show you how my easy clean sump works and also what I use this basket for. GV Crimes Australia. Okay then, first off, we're going to change out the fine filter pad. And because it blocks up about every one or two weeks, I didn't want to have to remove all the sponges just to get to the fine pad. So that's why I have it mounted on top of my BCB basket. So I removed the pad and the platform, and instead of washing it out now, here's one I prepared earlier. When I trimmed the mesh for this platform, I left these small protrusions on the end to grip the pad. So we wrap the pad around and then tuck it in, and then it slides in up against the short clean-out baffle. And you notice I don't even need to turn the flow off, it's that simple. And like I said, when you're changing this pad out every one or two weeks, depending on how dirty the fish are, it's just so much easier, it's just very quick and simple, a couple of minutes and you're done. And you can see there where it sits up against that baffle, which means the water comes up and over the top and won't lift the front of the pad up. And that's what makes it so easy to change. And now onto the sponges, which as we all know is usually the really messy part. So first things, we switch the pump off to stop the flow. And then we need to siphon out the sponge chamber. And to stop the hose falling out, viewers, you guessed it, we're going to use the column from Aussie Aquatic approved water change device. So first we adjust the hose to the correct length and then it goes down in between the clean out baffle and the sponge chamber and then we start draining. So now I pulled the hose out of the way so you can see exactly how this clean out baffle works. See so there you can see the water has only come down as far as the baffle on the media side which keeps all that dirty water in that little sponge chamber. And also on the right, the heater chamber stays full, so if you forget to turn the heaters off, it doesn't matter. So now it's safe to remove the sponges, and all that muck and detritus is going to stay in this one chamber and not dirty the rest of the sump. So now it's just a matter of vacuuming this part out and collecting as much of it as we can. And then once all the water's drained out, just grab a bit of rag and give it a bit of a wipe, get that last bit of stuff off the bottom and clean up a few pond snail legs which live in there as well. And so now we give the sponges a quick rinse and before anyone jumps up and down this is rainwater so it's not going to kill all the bacteria so we don't have to worry about that. And then we just reinstall the sponges and then refill the sump. How easy was that? And now we have our nice clean sump and the fish must really appreciate it because about 15 minutes after I finished cleaning it the Severums decided they wanted to get a little bit frisky. Well viewers, that's how my easy clean sump works. But I suppose at this point you're all wondering What about the basket? Right, the basket. I just use this basket as a stand for when I clean out the fine pads. It makes it so much easier to rinse them off. It fits on nice and neat and you just squirt all that detritus off. And how easy is that? Well, if you like this sort of video viewers, let me know and maybe even consider subscribing. And if there's any other topics you want covered, feel free to let me know down below. So once that's all washed out, just hang it out on the clothesline to dry. Simple. So there you have it viewers, a nice clean sump with very little hassle. Well I hope you got something out of this video and if you like leaving likes, leave a like. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for stopping by. Please remember to like and subscribe and check out one of these videos.